So I'm going to mute you all. And let's start in child pose. Stretching our arms nice and long out in front of you. And sending your hips to your heels. And bringing your awareness to your breath. That ujjayi breath. Whisper in the back of the throat. Good. Keep stretch, spread those fingers nice and wide. And on your next inhale, walk your hands over to the right to get a nice stretch on the left side of the body. <clears throat> and you can place your left hand on top of your right if you'd like. Keep that breath going. Keep nice long sides, a nice long spine. Good, and then walk your hands back um, to the center, then over to the left and get a nice stretch on the right side of your body. And this time you can place your right hand on top of your left. And keep that breath going. Nice. And then come back to center and tuck your toes under and come on into downward facing dog. And grounding down into the L's of the hands and sending those heels to the earth and having a nice heavy head. Think of a bowling ball. I just like to think of that, the bowling ball head. So it's really heavy. <clears throat> Take all the tension out of the neck as you ground down into the L's of the hands of opening up those mason jars, the, Left hand goes counterclockwise and the right hand goes clockwise. And you really press into the L's of the hands to wake up those triceps. And keeping your stomach engaged and sending your sacrum straight up to the sky. And keep breathing. Take one more breath and then come up to the balls of the feet and tiptoe all the way up to your thumbs and come on into ragdoll, grabbing opposite elbows again Heavy head, soft bend in the knees. And if you like, you could sway from side to side if that feels good. Keep your breath going. And grounding down to all four corners of the feet. Nice. And then release the hands to the earth and uncurl the spine one vertebra at a time and root to rise to come in to extended mountain pose, spinning those pinky fingers towards one another Really grounding down to all four corners of the feet while you reach your fingers right up to the sky, staying nice and grounded through the pelvis there and lifting up off the hips. Bring the palms together and your thumbs to your heart and set your gaze at your fingertips or close your eyes and set an intention for your practice this afternoon. Good, extended mountain pose. And forward fold, exhale. Take a halfway lift, a long spine, and step back to high plank. And hold your plank here, keeping your stomach engaged, keeping your ribs knitted together. Good, and shift your shoulders over your hips and lower halfway down. And then upward facing dog, inhale using your bandhas to come into downward facing dog and taking your breaths here, outer shins in as you send your outer ankles towards the earth and spinning those inner ankles back towards the back of your space. Good. Take one more breath and soften the knees and step your right foot forward and then your left. Halfway lift. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Root to rise. Inhale, extended mountain pose, smitting the pink, pinky fingers towards one another. Exhale, forward fold. Take a halfway lift. And you can step, or if you like to float, you can float back. But if you're stepping, step with the left foot. Everybody meet in high plank or low plank, lower down to upward facing dog. Nice, keep the shoulders down, arm bones back, using your bandhas to downward facing dog. 
Taking your three breaths here, breathing in and out through your nose, that Ujjayi breath, constricting the back of the throat, like fogging up a mirror, and sending those heels. They don't have to touch, but that's the direction they're going in, down towards the floor. Point your fingers are, 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 are straight ahead, and you energetically try to squeeze those thumbs together. Take one more breath, soften the knees, and either step or float forward. Just use your opposite foot if you're stepping. Take halfway lift, long spine, and exhale forward fold. Nice, root to rise, extended mountain pose. And forward fold, exhale. Halfway lift, the long spine. And either step or float back. If you're floating, be sure you land low. And then lower down, elbows in to up dog, to downward facing dog. Take your breaths again. We're building all these asanas from the ground up, our foundation. And right now we're building tapas, a fire in the pit of our stomach, warming our body up. Keep your breath going. Take one more breath. Soften the knees or either step and float or, start, or float forward. Take halfway lift and forward fold. Nice. Big toes touching, heels slightly apart, and come on into chair pose. Ukatasana, thunderboat, whatever you call it. Sink as low as you can in your knees, <laughs> sending those knees right over the third toe, keeping your heart nice and open, shoulders back. You want a nice long neck. See if you can sink three more inches in those knees. Good. Take one more breath, hands to the heart, to the earth. Halfway lift, and either step or float back. If you're floating, land lightly, using your abdominal muscles. Lower down, elbows in, to upward facing dog, shine that chest through the triceps, to downward facing dog. Nice. Take your right leg up to the sky, and take knee to nose, and step through, right up to your thumbs, to warrior one. Help your foot if you need to. Come straight up the midline, keeping your pelvis nice and level, tracking that right knee over the third toe. Keep breathing, trying to get the triceps right by the ears and straightening those elbows. If that doesn't work for you, you can always cactus your arms. Most important thing is to keep that breath going in and out through your nose. Take one more breath, see so you can sink three inches lower and lift three inches up off of your hips. Touching the ceiling there, Good, hands to the heart, to the earth, step back to high plank. Going to chaturanga, lower down to low plank, elbows in, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Using your bandhas, good, nice. Take your uh, left leg up to the sky and step it through to warrior one. Step lightly and arms come straight up the midline wrapping those pinky fingers towards one another. Again, leveling that pelvis, sending that left hip back, right hip forward. Spin the muscle, muscle the bone, and lengthen that right leg as you hug everything in and you extend out from the center. Try to take as much space as you can and also soften where you can. Finding the drishti at eye level or up at the ceiling, not on the floor. Take one more breath, hands to the heart, to the earth. Step back to high plank. Going to chaturanga, lower down to low plank, elbows in, to upward facing dog, nice, to downward facing dog. Take your three breaths again, breathing in and out through your nose, while you're ground down, really ground down to elbows the hands, and keep those sides nice and long and your spine nice and long. Relax that head, shake your head no, get all the tension out, and yes, nice. Take one more breath, Soften the knees and either step or float forward. Take halfway lift, long spine, exhale, forward fold, and come on into chair pose. Big toes touching, heels slightly apart. Keep your breath going in and out through your nose. Sink a little bit lower, reach a little bit higher with those fingers, spread those fingers wide. Hands to the heart, to the earth. Exhale, inhale, either step uh, halfway lift, either step or float back. Going to chaturanga, lower down to upward facing dog. 
Nice, two downward facing dog. Extend your right leg up to the sky and take knee to nose, curl in like a mad cat, exhale, and then three-legged dog. And then step through to warrior one, step lightly, come on up, really grounding down to um, both feet, all both four, the four corners of both feet as you energetically trying to squeeze those legs together. Nice. I like to keep my left foot at 11 o'clock. Don't turn it out too much because then you pull, pull yourself off your square, shoulders over the hips. You want a nice square there. Take one more breath, hands to the heart, to the earth. Step back to high plank. Going to Chaturanga, lower down to low plank. Good. Shine the chest through, upward facing dog. Keep your breath going to downward facing dog. Movement with breath. Take your left leg up to the sky. Keep your foot pointed or flexed. Don't just have it dangling there. And then knee to nose, curl in, exhale. And then inhale, three-legged dog. Nice. And then knee to nose, curl in, exhale, and step through. Step that left foot right up to your thumbs and come on up to warrior one. Good. Nice. This time the right foot's at one o'clock, that back foot. Leveling the pelvis off trying to get that left knee parallel to the earth, the quad. Keep breathing, keep reaching with those arms and keep sinking down through the legs, through the uh, front leg there, the left leg. One more breath, hands to the heart, to the earth, step back to high plank. I'm going to Chaturanga, lower down to low plank, elbows in, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Take your breaths here, breathing in and out through your nose, sending the sacrum straight up to the sky. Outer shins in as much as you can, then you resist against that. Keep your breath going. Nice. Take one more breath, soften the knees, and either step or float forward. Take a halfway lift, long spine, exhale, forward fold, empty out. Good, chair pose, big toes touching, heels slightly apart. Keep your heart nice and open, squeezing those scapulas together, finding a softness where you can. Good, take one more breath, hands to the heart, to the earth. Halfway lift, and either step or float back. Land lightly, going to Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Keep your flow going to downward facing dog. Nice, extend your right leg up to the sky. And then take your right knee to your right armpit, as high as you go. Bend it and bring it in to the right. Yes, and keep breathing. Keep breathing, don't get out of it yet. Now you can go to three-legged dog, good. Nice, people. And then knee to nose, and then step through to warrior one. Step lightly, come straight up. The arms come straight up the midline. Finding the drissi at eye level. See if you can sink a little bit lower in that right knee and lift the arms a little bit higher. Spread those fingers nice and wide, pinky fingers facing one another. Good. Then hands to the heart, to the earth. Step back to high plank. Lower down to low plank. To upward facing dog. Good. To downward facing dog. Great. Take your left leg up to the sky, take it up with control and grace, and then take your left knee to your left armpit and hold it there. Use your abdominal muscles. Take one more breath, and then back to three-legged dog. And then knee to nose, left knee to nose, and step through to warrior one. Step lightly, come straight up the midline. Good, keep breathing, nice, nice, nice. Keep your shoulders down and back. Good. See, that's right. Beautiful. Take one more breath. Hands to the heart, to the earth, and step back to high plank. You can do one leg of chaturangas if, you, if you'd like. And then lower down to upward facing dog, to downward facing dog. Take your breaths again, breathing in and out through your nose. Soften through the thoracic area. That's right between your scapulas, if you can. Good. Take one more breath, soften the knees, and either step or float forward. 
Take a halfway lift, a long spine, and empty out, forward fold, soften those knees. Chair pose, big toes touching, heels slightly apart, hands through the heart, to the earth. A halfway lift, and either step or float back, going through chaturanga, to up dog, to downward facing dog. Nice. Extend your right leg up to the sky, and then take your right knee to your left armpit. Cross it over and hold it there as high as you can. Nice. And then three-legged dog. And then step the right, through, through, uh, right foot up to the thumbs and come straight up the, the midline all the way up. And then open up to warrior two. And then flip that palm, reverse your warrior and windmill the arms down to the mat and step back to high plank. Keep the flow going. Lower down to low plank. To upward facing dog. Nice. To downward facing dog. Extend your left leg up to the sky with control. And then bend your knee and curl in and, and take it to your left knee and take it to the um, right armpit or the tricep or the, uh, the yeah, the wrist or wherever, and then take it back to three-legged dog, then step through to warrior one, step nice and light, come on up, and open up to warrior two, and flip your palm, reverse your warrior, think of going up more than back, then windmill the arms down to the earth, and step back to high plank, lower down to low plank, keep your breath going, to upward facing dog, shine the chest through the triceps, to downward facing dog. Nice. Take a breath, know that you have child pose anytime you need it. Take a breath and empty out. And then bring the feet together as one leg in the back of the mat and extend your right leg up to the sky. Right leg up to the sky and bend that knee. Keep your shoulders square and take three circles one way with the, the hip circles and then three the other direction and then sustain it so I know that you're you finished and you're sending that left heel to the earth as much as you can squaring off those shoulders and then you're going to open up the hip so much if you want you can flip you don't have to flip you're perfect where you are so if you like to flip, you can flip your dog or you can stay right where you are, sending the hips up nice and high. Good. Keep breathing. Nice. Take one more breath. And if you flip, gracefully flip back around. And if you didn't flip, everybody meet in, in high plank. High plank. Good. And then ground down into your right arm and open up to side plank. And you can take a knee here. You can modify it, stack the feet on top, or stagger them, you decide, pushing the hips forward, the shoulders back, open up the heart. And you can look up at your left hand is that, if that's available. That's right, Allie, good. Take one more breath, then gracefully come back around to a high plank, going through chaturanga, lower down to low plank, to upward facing dog, to downward facing dog. Nice. Step your right foot forward and come on up to crescent lunge. Step lightly right up to the thumbs. You're staying nice and high on the left foot, the foot that's behind. You're pushing that heel over the ball of the foot as you stretch your arms. Okay, good. Find your balance and then straighten that right knee and then bend it. Two more times, straighten the right knee, stretch those fingers to the ceiling, and bend it, leveling that pelvis off. One more time, straighten that right knee if you can, and bend the right knee, bring the thumbs to your heart, and then take your left elbow outside your right knee for crescent lunge twist. So on your inhale, lengthen the spine, and on the exhale, you twist from your belly. And do that again. Inhale, lengthen your spine nice and long. Then exhale, twist from the belly. And if you'd like, you can open your arms on your next inhale. 
Keep your breath going in and out through your nose, really grounding down into the four corners of the right foot. Good, and then windmill the arms around to warrior two. Good, binding your drishti over your right fingers. You're a nice warrior two, leveling the pelvis. Just make sure the arms are um, level, that you don't have the back arm higher than the front. It's so one nice long, long arm through the center of the back. Flip your palm, we're gonna flow here a little bit. Reverse your warrior, inhale, and then come back to side angle, exhale. And then we reverse the warrior again, reverse, inhale, and come on into side angle, exhale. One more time, reverse your warrior. And this time when you come to side angle, sustain it, hold it. And you can rest your forearm on your quad or you can reach the fingertips to the earth, sending the hips forward and the shoulders to the back wall there. Good. Again, you can look up at your left fingertips if that's available to you. Some of us like to bind. You can take that um, left arm around. And if you want, you can reach through and clasp your, your hands if you want. You don't have to do this. Keep breathing. The most important thing is to keep breathing and opening up that heart. Nice. Take one more breath and then place the hands on either side of your right foot and step back to high plank. Going to chaturanga, lower down to low plank, elbows in, shine your chest through the triceps, and then to downward facing dog, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nice, good. Take your left leg up to the sky, and then bend that knee, send the knee straight up to the sky. Keep your foot flexed or pointed, please. Don't just have it dangling there, keep it energized. And then do three circles one way, with the hip, hip circles, uh-huh. That's right, Chelsea, there you go. And then three the other way. And keep grounding down into the L's of the hands. Good, and you're perfect here. Some of us like to flip. You can flip the dog. If you don't wanna flip, you don't have to. You're perfect right here. Just keep opening up that hip. Keep breathing, good. Sending the hips nice and high. Take one more breath. And if you flip, come back around to a high plank. Everybody meet in high plank. And grounding down into the uh, left arm and open up to side plank, stacking the hips on top of each other, staggering the foot, or uh, bringing uh, a knee down. Good. Most important thing is to keep that breath going. In and out through your nose. Keep breathing. Take one more breath and then gracefully come back around to a high plank, good. And then lower down to low plank. Shine the chest through the triceps, upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Beautiful. Take a breath and empty out. Take another breath and step your left foot forward and come on up to crescent lunge. Leveling the pelvis off, making sure the shoulders are right over the hips, stretching the arms nice and wide, uh, long, long. And if you want to take them wide, you certainly can. You don't want to wear your shoulders for earrings. You want to keep them down and back. Good. And then you want to push that right uh, heel over the ball of the right foot and then straighten the knee, straighten the left knee, and then come on down. And then straighten it again up and then press the knee right over the third toe. One more time, straighten that left knee, good. And then the knee over the third toe, good. Bring your thumbs to your heart and take your right elbow outside your left knee this time. Good, that's right. Being mindful not to dump your torso on your quad. That's right, Megan, good. On your inhale, lengthen. And on your exhale, twist. And do that again on your inhale, lengthen. And exhale, twist from your belly. And on your next inhale, you can open your arms if that's available to you. Keep breathing. Take one more breath and then windmill the arms around to warrior two. Really stretching the arms out, stay nice and low, good. Skin the muscle, muscle the bone on that back leg, hugging everything in, lengthening the back, the um, right leg. 
Good, then flip your palm, we'll flow a little bit. Reverse your warrior, inhale, and then come on in, exhale into side angle. And then reverse your warrior, inhale, and then exhale to side angle. That's right. One more time, reverse that warrior. Think of going more up than back and come on into side angle. Rest your forearm on your quad or reach the fingertips to the earth. Keep your breath going, pushing the hips forward, the shoulders to the back. You like to bind. You can take um, one arm around your back and then reach through and clasp your hands. This is a wonderful heart opener. Keep opening the chest. Keep trying to uh, bring the shoulders on top of each other. Stacking the shoulders on top if you felt good. Nice. Take one more breath and then place the hands on either side of your left foot and step back to high plank. I'm going to chaturanga, lower down to low plank, to upward facing dog, to downward facing dog. Nice. Good. Soften the knees and either step or float forward. If you're floating, land lightly. Take a halfway lift and a forward fold, exhale. Big toes touching, heels slightly apart, and come on into chair pose. Come into chair pose. Good, and then place your hands behind your sacrum, squeeze those um, scapulas together, then straighten the knees and come on forward and breathe. Let's have a soft knee. Good, and release the head, keep breathing. In and out through your nose. If that's too much on your shoulders, you can always bring the hands down. Take one more breath and then release the hands and come on into chair pose again. Good. Tracking the knees right over the third toe. Sinking as low as you can, but lifting up off the hips. Bring your thumbs to your heart and then take your right elbow outside your left knee for ch uh, chair twist. Again, we want to hug everything into the center. Yep. Yeah. Good, squeeze everything in, yeah. Especially those hips, tendency is to let the right hip stick out and chair twist. On your, on your inhale, lengthen, and on your exhale, twist from your belly. Good, one more time, inhale, lengthen, and as you twist, open your arms if you'd like. Good, keep breathing, take one more breath, and then release the hands to the earth, and toe heel your feet apart. And with your peace fingers, grab your big toes and take a halfway lift, soften the knees and a forward fold. The elbows are pointed to either sides of the body. Bend your knees as much as you need to to rest your torso on your, your quads. Good. That's right, Con Constance, good. Keep breathing, heavy, heavy head. Nice. Chelsea, see if you can take your elbows out to the sides. Yeah, bend them. So you, yeah, good. Bend your knees. Good. Take one more breath and then release that and toe heel your feet back together again. Big toes touching, heels slightly apart and come on into chair pose. Sit as low as you can. Clasp your hands behind your sacrum. Again, squeeze the scapulas together and as you fold forward, straighten the knees as much as you can to keep them soft. Don't jam back into them. Good. Keep breathing in and out through your nose. Nice. Really grounding down to all four corners of the feet. Beautiful. And then release the hand, uh, hands and come back into chair pose. Come back into chair pose. And then take your thumbs to your heart and then take your right elbow outside your left knee for chair twist. Trying to get the hips lower than the heart. Your head is an extension of your spine as, as you send your sit bones back towards the back of the room. Alexandria, get your left hip in. Yeah, it's sticking out a little bit. Keep breathing. Mm -hmm. And then open your arms if you'd like. Nice. Take one more breath. And then release the hands to the earth and toe heel your feet apart. And from the front, slide the palms of your hands underneath the balls of the feet and come on into Gorilla. So slide the hands under. Then you take a halfway lift, 
Soften the knees and forward fold. Again, bending your knees as much as you can to get the, uh, the elbows out to either side of the body. Good. Keep breathing. Take one more breath and then release the hands. And you can toe heel your, your feet out as wide as the mat and come down into a malasana. With your dristi straight forward, your focus, thumbs to your heart, and you can squat down here. Keep breathing in and out through your nose. Good. And then some of us may want to take a crow pose. And if you want to do that, I like to bring my feet closer together. Plant the L's of the hands into the floor like an up dog and then climb up on your triceps if you want to do. You don't have to do this, but if you want to do, good. Yeah, everybody's doing it, great. Keep breathing. Good. Take one more breath and either step, float, or just step back to uh, downward facing dog. Have, you can go through chaturanga or you can just step back to downward facing dogs. Anytime these uh, chaturangas are getting too much on your wrists, which I know they do, your wrists are, seems like it's always the first thing that starts hurting. You can always just step back to downward facing dog. Nice. Then walk your hands back to your feet and uncurl the, when you get there, uncurl the spine one vertebra at a time and come on into extended mountain pose, root to rise. And we'll come into eagle on the right. So right arm under, to your left, your elbow points at shoulder height, finding your jersey through that little window of the forearms and then take your uh, right leg over. And you can hook that right toe around the, um, left calf if you like, sending that uh, right hip back, left hip forward. Don't let the shoulders round forward, forward, keep them back. You can always do this to modify if it's too much on your shoulders. And then from here, you wanna push the forearms towards the front of the room. Keep breathing, finding a softness where you can. That balance, effort, and ease. So you're working like crazy in the lower legs, but you're lifting up nice and high off the hips and keeping the the heart open. Nice. Good. And trying to find a, to get all the wiggles that's out of the ankle. <laughs> nice. And then release that, extended mountain pose. And we'll take eagle on the left. So left arm under and sink as low as you can on your hips and then take your left um, leg over. Squeezing the inner thighs. Again, finding the dristy right through the forearms, keeping your head right on top of your spine. Dristy it as straight forward. Good, keep your breath going. Nice, take one more breath and then release that. Extended mountain pose. And we'll take eagle one more time on the right. So right arm under, bend those knees and then right leg over. Keep your breath going in and out through your nose. And you can use that big toe as a kickstand too or you can pr press your uh, right pinky toe against the side of your, outside of your left ankle. Nice. Take one more breath and then bring that right knee to the left knee and step forward and come on up to airplane. Up to airplane, so you're moving up the mat. So the left leg should be lifted and you're grounding down into the mound of the right big toe your focus is a little bit out in front. It's not directly down at the floor. You're keeping your back up against your leg and your leg up against your back. You're putting a footprint on the back wall. Take one more breath and the little toe is facing the, the floor, it's parallel. Take one more breath and then step that left foot forward and bring your right foot up for tree. You can help it. Wherever it lands on the leg is perfect, but it's not on the knee. And then you're pushing your foot into your leg and your leg into your foot. Good. Your thumbs to your heart. And then when you feel very stable, you can grow the branches, keeping a softness in the upper body. That's sukha, it's called sukha in yoga. Good. Now listen up from here, we're gonna go into dancer. So see if you can do it without putting your foot down. It's a hard one. So you wanna grab your uh, inside or outside of your right foot, squeeze the knees together. 
and keeping the left arm up. And then when you're ready, you can start tilting forward, shining your chest forward, kicking your foot into your hand, your hand into the foot. That's right. And you're perfect just standing right here on one leg. Keep breathing. Keep kicking that foot into the hand so you get a little bit higher. Keep your, your back up. You focus out. You're thirsty. Beautiful. Nice. Take one more breath and then release the right foot next to the left. Extended mountain pose. Inhale. Exhale. Forward fold. Take a halfway lift. You can either step or float back, or you can step back to downward facing dog if you do not want to do chaturangas. You choose to up dog, to downward facing dog, and then walk, once you're there, walk your hands back to your feet, and uncurl the spine one vertebra at a time. The head is the last thing that's going to come up, and you're going to come up into extended mountain pose. Good. Reaching those fingers up to the ceiling, keeping the shoulders down, arm bones back, and then taking that left arm underneath the right, bringing the um, elbows to shoulder height, and then pushing the forearms towards the front of the room by keeping your shoulders back, and then take your left leg over your right. Find us your stability, really root, uh, grounding down into the mound of the uh, right big toe as you sink a little bit lower in the pelvis area, but lifting up the waist off the hips and the pelvis. And you keep breathing. Good. Nice. And then um, on your next inhale, bring your left knee to your right knee and step forward and come on into airplane. Keeping the back up against the leg, the leg up against the back. And I like to keep my palms down and alongside of me instead of out like a T. I think it's easier to balance. Good. Nice. And then step that right foot forward and come on up to tree. You can help your uh, foot. Come on up to tree. Bring your thumbs to your heart. Find your balance and your stability and that sukha, that softness. And then when you're ready, you can grow the branches if you want. And from here to even the challenges up, you can look up at the sky, take a little bit of a back bend. Nice. Good. Nice people. Good, Megan. That's right, Constance. Good. Take one more breath and then bend that left knee in and reach back with your left hand and take your right arm up. Establish your balance here before we move into dancer. And then you send your, if you want, you're perfect here, or you can send your heart forward and kick into your hand, making sure, trying to feel that, that the knee is in alignment with the hip. You don't have it out to the side. And if you ever fall out of these positions, just go back in, just try again. That's how you learn, that's how your body memory. Good. Take one more breath, keep your breath going, and then release that. Nice. And then let's take some backstrokes. Backstrokes. You can wiggle out whatever you need to do. Good. Extended mountain pose, root to rise, and a forward fold all the way over. Take a halfway lift and either step or float back or meet in downward facing dog. You can go to the chaturanga or you can just step right back to downward facing dog, to up dog, to downward facing dog. Nice. Good. Then step your right foot forward, right between your thumbs. Windmill the arms around to warrior two. Again, being mindful that that uh, right knee is over the third toe. Are you pushing the outside of the right knee to your pinky toe? Then straighten that right knee and send your left hips back and lengthen as much as you can before you come on into Trikonasana. And the hand placements in front of the foot or behind the foot or somewhere on your leg, or you can grab your big toe, but you wanna push your hips forward and the shoulders to the back wall. Keep your breath going, keep grounding down to all four corners of the feet, keep hugging into the center. Good, and then expanding out from there. Take one more breath and then soften the right knee and let the left arm bring you up. 
and turn your toes towards the sideways towards the mat and uh, clasp your hands behind your sacrum, squeeze the scapulas together, eye line follows the wall, and come forward to a wide leg of forward fold, sending the sit bones back and the sacrum straight up to the sky, and your weight is toward the balls of the feet. And I know some of us like to come upside down, so this is the perfect place to do a tripod headstand. Good. Keep your elbows in if you're in a headstand. Good. Nice. Find your dristi right through your legs. Keep your breath going. Take one more breath. If you're up, gracefully come on down with control. And then place your hands on your hips and come up with a nice ironing board back. And turn your toes towards the front of the room. Step up. The, a left leg a little bit, lift the left, uh, left arm up, and we're going to come into twisting trikonasana. So come forward with a nice flat back, and then place the fingers on the earth in alignment with your right foot, and then open the left arm up for twisting trikonasana. So the, the left arm comes up, you come forward, you place the left hand on the um, an, an alignment with the right foot, a little bit over to the middle of the mat, and then open up the, the right arm. So on your inhale, you lengthen the spine, and on the exhale, you twist. Good, do that again. Inhale, lengthen your spine, and exhale, twist from your belly. Beautiful. Take one more breath, and then release your hands to the earth, and step back to a high plank. Going through vinyasa, lower down to low plank. To up, use your knees if you need to. Upward facing dog, using the abdominal muscles to come into downward facing dog. Nice. Take a breath and empty out. On your next inhale, step your left foot forward. Step right up between your thumbs and windmill the arms around to warrior two. Stretching the arms out from the center of the back. One nice long arm. And then straighten the left leg and send your right hip back. Lengthen as much as you can before you start to tip forward. For Chakanasana. Uh-huh. Sending the hips forward, the shoulders back. Keep breathing. In and out through your nose. Nice. Good. Keep your breath going and you can look up at your right hand. The right hand or the left? Yeah, the right, right hand. hand, the right hand. Take one more breath and then soften the left knee and let the right arm bring you up and then turn your toes towards the um, side of the mat. Hands on your hips, squeeze those scapulas together, look up at the sky, come on forward for a wide-legged forward fold. And once you're there, I want you to walk your hands out so you're in a nice, wide downward facing dog and with your right hand grab your left elbow and then look under that left armpit just for a twist here good mm -hmm. and you look underneath your armpit good wherever you can grab on your leg it doesn't have to be on the ankle it can be the calf or behind the knee good take one more breath and then come back to your wide-legged um, downward dog. And with your left hand, grab your uh, right either thigh, your calf, or your ankle, and then look under the right armpit. Set, be sure you're sending both sit bones straight back. You're breathing. Nice. Uh -huh. Take one more breath, and then release that. And then walk your hands underneath so your, your, your fingers are in alignment with your toes. And then bring your hands up um, to your hips and come up with a nice flat back, ironing board back. And then turn your toes towards me. Step your right foot up. Take the right arm up. And we'll come into twisting trichinosa. So you have a nice flat back here. Lengthen, sending the sit bones back, the head forward. Then place your right fingers in alignment with your left big toe and, and, and then open up. 
Good. On your inhale, lengthen the spine. On the exhale, twist. Nice, do that one more time. Lengthen the spine on your inhale, and then twist from your belly. Trying to stack the shoulders on top of each other and, and, and the ribs. Good, take one more breath, then place your hands on either side of your left foot. Step back to a high plank. Hold your plank. Hold your plank. And then I want you to lift your right leg off the earth and tap it out to the side and then bring it back and just keep it lifted. Tap it out to the side and bring it up. One more time, just tap it and bring it back up and place it down. And then do the same thing with the left. So you try keeping your plank and then tap it out to the right and the left side and then bring it back up and tap it and lift. One more time, tap it, keep your stomach, lift, Place it back down and slowly lower down for five, four, three, two, and one. Place your hands alongside of your, your body and set yourself up for locust. So on your next inhale, come on up for locust. Shine that chest forward, point the toes. The toes are reaching to the back of the room as your chest is reaching forward and you're breathing. Palms are down. See if you can lift a little bit higher and then let that go and turn your head to one side and rest. Head to one side and rest. Bringing the awareness back to your breath. If I was there, I would give you a massage in between your scapulas. I love people to do that for me. So I like to do it to people that come to my class. Okay, bring your third eye to the earth again. And this time we'll just grab our, our uh, coming into floor bow. So grab your ankles or your feet <clears throat> and squeeze the inner thighs together. And when you're ready, come on up for floor bow. See if you can get the quads off the earth and see how many ribs you can get off. And you're focusing out. Good, that's right. Good, Chelsea, nice. See if you can lift a little bit higher. That's right, Francesca, good. One more breath and then release that and turn your head to the opposite side and bend your knees and you can take windshield wipers, just a few of them, back and forth if you'd like. <clears throat> this is the igniting part of the Baptiste yoga, the, the back bends. Okay, great. So lengthen the legs on the earth and then bring your thumbs by your third rib and come on up to up dog. Nice, to downward facing dog. And we're going to move into half camel. So take your right leg up to the sky as high as it goes and step that right foot right up to your thumbs, lower your left knee down. Take your left arm up and windmill it around and grab it someplace on the back of the leg or the heel here. And then you take both shoulders up to the sky. This is half camel and keep breathing. Sending the hips forward, reaching the arm to the back of the room. Take one more breath and then windmill the arms down to the earth and step back to downward facing dog. And take a breath. <clears throat> Good, and then take your left leg up to the sky as high as it goes <coughs> and step it through your thumbs, lower the right knee down, windmill the right arm up and the left arm comes up to the sky and wherever it lands, the back, the right arm on your, your leg is fine. You wanna reach for your heel if you can. Keep pushing the hips forward, keep breathing. Good, take one more breath and then windmill the arms around back to the earth on either side of your left foot. Step back to just to a high, um, just a downward facing dog. Good. And take a breath and soften the knees and either step or float forward and lie down on your back and set yourself up for a bridge. So you can bring your heels, they should be, uh, your legs should be hip distance apart Bring the heels as close to your sit bones as you can. And when you're ready, come on up for bridge, bridge pose. 
all the way up. And then you can tuck your shoulders underneath you and clasp your hands underneath your sacrum. Press the forearms into the earth. Good. And come on up. Squeeze the knees right over the third toe. Don't let them um, hang out to the sides. Yeah, they should be right in alignment with your third toe. So you can lift a little bit higher. Good. And then uncurl the spine. Okay, we're going to just do one more. So you can do a wheel or you can stick with bridge and we're gonna hold it for 10 counts. So when you're ready, come on up. If you wanna do wheel, plant your hands by your ears. If you wanna do bridge, just come back up to bridge. Here we go. I'll, I'll wait till everybody gets there before I start counting. Bring your toes at 12 o'clock. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, and one. And tuck your chin and come on down. And put your feet in Supta Baddha Konasana. <coughs> Soles of the feet together, let the knees open up. And just bring the awareness back to your breath. You can put one hand, your left hand on your heart, right hand on your belly if you'd like. But just breathe here. Good, nice. And then come on into happy baby. So you can grab the outsides of your feet. Keep your sacrum on the floor. Don't curl the sacrum up and you can walk, rock from side to side on the sacrum. <clears throat> nice. Good, and now give yourself a big hug with your knees. Place your hands behind your knees and rock and roll three times on the length of the spine and then come on up to boat pose. Three times and come on up to boat. You can keep holding behind the knees or you can place your hands to the sides or you can, and you can straighten your legs if you like. And we're gonna hold it for 10, nine, good. Eight, seven, good. Six, nice. Five, four, three, two and one, beautiful. Cross your legs and you can go through Chaturanga. You can do however you want to get. Everybody meeting down with facing dog, moving into pigeon. So if you like to do pigeon on your back, you're more than welcome to do that too. So everybody set them set their self up for pigeon on the right. However you want to get there. <clears throat> and stretch your arms out nice and long if you're on your torso. You know, on your back, be sure that you don't curl up so much that you lift your sacrum off. And then bring your awareness back to your breath. And if you start thinking about something else, bring the awareness back to your breath and back to your body. If your thoughts start wandering off. And being mindful that that left foot is not sickled. It's the uh, leg is right behind the hip. The alignments, one straight line from the hip and breathe. Keep your breath going, good. Keep sending that right left hip to the earth if you can. And good. Take one more breath and come on up and switch sides. So switch to your left. You can come to downward facing dog. You can swing the uh, left leg around, however you wanna do it. If you're on your back, just switch legs and come on into pigeon on your left. Trying to get that left shin parallel. That's what we're working for, parallel to the earth. 
And then you bring your, your torso over that. Good. Again, bringing that awareness back to the breath, that Ujjayi breath, that ebb and flow of the ocean. And stay in the body here. Calming the mind. You take one more breath and come on up and swing that right leg around and we'll take a nice release forward. So arms up over the head, flex your feet or point them and the long spine looking to take the round out of the back, just come on forward. If this is as far as you go, that's perfect. I just don't wanna see a rounded back like that. Long spine, then you can grab your toes, bring the pinky toes back towards you and with your thumbs, Press your big toes towards the front of the room, and then you can drape your body, as long as the spine is long. <clears throat> Good. Take one more breath, and then come on up. Take your hands out in front of you, and uncurl the spine one vertebra at a time. And bring your knees in, to give yourself a hug. Extend your, um, Let's see, let's extend the left leg out and shift your hips over to the right. And with your left hand, take your right knee over to the left and then look over the right hand for a supine twist. Good. Take one more breath, come back to center and switch sides. So extend your right leg out. Keep your left knee into your chest and sh shift your hips over to the left. And with your right hand, take your um, left knee over to the right and then look over your left hand. Nice. And then come back to center and give yourself one last hug and come on into Shavasana. Just, just letting the legs open up, the palms facing up, and just let everything go and have a deep rest here. Find healing and magic within yourself. Excuse me, that's not the one I wanted to read, sorry. That, value your past. Value your past and all the lessons you have learned. How easy it is to di diminish the importance of our past and look on our, on our history with a critical eye. We see the mistakes. We see what we think we should have known. We see what we could have done better. What we forget is that the reason we are able to see so clearly is because of the past and because of what we have learned. Often it is the very experiences we regret that have created this clear vision. Value what you've learned in your past. Each lesson has led to the next. Every person and event in each part of your life has been invaluable in shaping and forming you in creating the person you are today. Each part of your past, each person who has come into your life and shared experiences with you has helped you to open your heart more to life, love, God, others, and yourself. Even those experiences you think of, a, of as wrong or mistakes have been an important and necessary part in creating you. 
Sometimes those experiences formed the most important parts of, of you because they created in you compassion and understanding for others. Often the most painful events of your life are the ones that opened you to your ability to bring healing, help, and hope to others. Your past taught you to love others and yourself. It has helped you become a channel for the divine and a force for good in this world. When you look back at your past, look tenderly and gently at all you have been through. Look with the eyes of the soul. See that each experience was necessary to bring you home to your heart. Wiggle your fingers and toes and roll over to a comfortable side into in a fetal position. And with your eyes closed, come up to a seated position. Sitting nice and tall, bring your thumbs to your heart, to your third eye. The light in me sees and honors and respects the light in each one of you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for coming. Namaste. Namaste.